Hey guys, what's going on? Andy Parton here. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over the dirt bags in season workout that you guys have got, okay? What we've done is we've kind of shrinked it down into a two day split, okay? So you got two days of training throughout the spring or throughout the summer season, okay? Now the difference between the in season workout and the off season workout is we're going to try to maintain our strength, but we're gonna to try to pull out a lot of those, let's call them isolation exercises, all right? The things that are gonna make you sore. Uh, Cause you guys are gonna be super active throughout the season anyway, so you are gonna be a little bit sore. So we don't wanna have a lot of the ISO, uh, isolation type exercises are gonna make you more and more sore. We're really trying to tear down muscle tissue. That's not, that's not the purpose of in season. We're trying to maintain strength. All right, now what we don't want to happen is for us to kind of decline, you know, throughout the season, because what happens at the end of the season, we're trying to win championships. We're, you know, we're trying to win, you know, trophies and titles and things like that. So you don't want to have a slight decline. You want to have a slight increase. You want to continue to get bigger and better and stronger throughout the season. I see a lot of our guys in the summer and they stop working out and they end up losing 10 pounds. You know, that happens all the time. It's probably happened to you. All right, so one of the main things that you guys have got to do in season is make sure that you're taking enough calories. All right, most of you guys are probably in a caloric deficit. You're probably losing weight because your metabolisms, your metabolisms are so fast already and you're adding in all this extra movement, extra exercises and, and activities. So you're just burning more and more calories. All right, so make sure we're taking in enough calories uh, and rest. I mean, certainly you guys have got to have, you know, ample amount of rest. You need more rest than you think you need. You, know, you can't be going to bed at, you know, two in the morning and try to wake up at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. and think that you're going to be recovered, especially if you have activities or a game or something the next day. All right. Um, so the goal in season when we're training is we're going to train moderately heavy. We're going to have more sets and fewer repetitions. The more repetitions you guys have, the more muscle damage we're gonna do and the sore you're gonna be. That's not our goal in season, okay? And we're gonna have fast eccentrics and I'll demonstrate the exercises for you. We're gonna try to lower these weights quickly because the negatives, the lowering of the movements, is that's where you, most of your muscle damage is gonna be done. That's where the soreness is gonna come in and we're not trying to do that. And plus we're trying to move weights fast on the eccentric phase to set up that stretch reflex, okay? Um, no twisting movements. We're not gonna do any ab twisting abdominal movements, you know, during the season. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're dying to do it and you wanna maybe twist in the opposite way, if you're a right-handed hitter, you know, maybe some wall tosses or something like that. But we're not gonna do a lot of twisting stuff because you guys are twisting so much already. And, uh, and jumping. We're not gonna do a lot of jumping movements during the season and the off season we can do a lot of box jumps and you know kneeling jumps or jump you know sitting on a box and jumping up to a higher box things like that. We're not going to do that during the season. All right, so what we'll do now is I'll just uh, I'll start demonstrating the exercise. Okay, guys, first exercise is the wide stance box squat. All right, what we've got to do we've got to find something to sit on that's going to be it's going to make our the crease in our hips about parallel to our knee. Now maybe you know a, a half an inch or so high, but that's okay. We want to try to get as close to we close as we can where the crease in our hips is in our knee. We don't want to be sitting up here when we're box squatting. All right, we want to be able to get all the way back. Now we want to box squat over a regular traditional squat. It's going to make us a lot less sore. Okay, this is going to take uh, a lot less out of you, and you're going to get more out of the exercise. So when we sit down, come around the front. We want to have. Now this would be a narrow stance. Okay. This would be about a medium stance. You know, so we want to have a wider stance. This is a much more athletic stance, okay? So we want to be here and we want to sit back on the box. All right? So if you want to come to the side here, you can see how far I'm sitting back. My knee is in line with my ankle or slightly behind. All right, that's where we want to be. We don't want to be here where our knee is in front of our ankle. Okay, now what will happen is you guys will sit down. I'll, I'll just, if I just told you to sit down on a box, you're going to sit like this. Okay, and what that's doing, that's putting a lot of, uh, you're going to have your knee in front of your ankle, just like this. 
and you're going to be putting a lot of uh, emphasis on your quadricep when you're trying to get up, okay? We're trying to take it off our quads and put it into our posterior chain, our low back, our glutes, and our hamstrings. Those are the muscles that are going to increase explosive power. They're going to make you run faster, jump higher, all those types of things. So all that's going to be in your hips, glutes, hamstrings, low back. So we're going to try to sit back and try to get up as fast as we can, almost like a jump, okay? We're going to try to pull our heel to our butt, all right? Here, and I'm up. So I'll demonstrate. Now what this is, I would suggest, take a good look at this bar right here. <clears throat> I, would, I would suggest, if you can, you want to use a uh, safety squat bar like this. It takes a lot of the emphasis off of the shoulders. When you guys are, uh, you're, put, you're getting yourself really externally rotated, especially when you start using heavier weight when using a straight bar. This almost hurts my shoulders, especially when I rack it, okay? I think you guys will find that out as you get stronger and stronger. The heavier the weight is, when you start racking it, it's gonna put more and more pressure on your shoulders, and that's something we wanna, that's, that's a big deal for, uh, for us baseball players, okay? So I like the, sh the safety squat bar, and what happens, I got my wide stance, okay? I know you guys don't have a mono lift like this. You'd be using probably a squat rack or something like that. But we want to get under the weight. Okay, here. Squat back. Up. Back. Up. Okay. Now, the uh, sets and reps, we want to try to be about 75 to 85%. We're going to do 10 sets of two reps. Okay. Now, if one time during the week, if you guys want to work up maybe to 90% for one rep, that's fine. I don't want you guys going over 90%. When I say that, uh, I'm talking about your one rep max, okay? So, you know, if you can, you know, you just got to do the, the math. You know, if you can do 500 pounds on a squat for one, you just got to do, you know, 75 to 85% uh, for your 10 sets of two. Okay, guys, here we are. We're on the trap bar now, or the hex bar. A lot of your high school gyms have probably got a trap bar or a hex bar. You know, if not, you're gonna be uh, basically reduced to a straight bar, which is fine, and I'm gonna demonstrate that next. But this is the trap bar. To me, this is a much safer way for you guys to deadlift. It's gonna put you in a, in a really athletic position, you know, picking the weight up here, opposed to, you know, a conventional deadlift or a sumo deadlift, which I'll show you in a second. But what you wanna do, is line yourself up, you know, up where your hips about equal to the bar, okay? You're gonna try to keep your back straight, your abs tight, all right? You wanna come around to the side and you can see the flattest of my back. Now, a lot of times when guys go down, they'll lift their head up, and we don't wanna do that. We actually wanna to try to get our neck, so find a spot right out in front of you where I can get it, where, you know, where, you're, where you're, uh, your whole spine and your neck is right in line, okay? So it's going to look like this. All right, you see how fast that I lowered the weight. Again, you know, we, we're, we're trying to do fast eccentrics. We don't want to bounce the weight back up, but we want to lower the weight and come back up. Now for this exercise, we're going to do 10 sets of one rep. The first rep is the most important rep in athletics, okay? The rest of the stuff is just work. We're talking about building strength and power. So that's the trap bar. I would uh, highly suggest you guys use the trap bar uh, over the straight bar if you, if you have the opportunity to. If not, I'm gonna show you the straight bar. All right, guys, here we are on the straight bar. All right, now what I've suggested for you guys to do, if you'll notice, we've got these blocks underneath the weights. Now, you can use these type of blocks, probably don't have these, but we, you can do mats, you could put a plate, you know, whatever. We're gonna try to get, you know, two to four inches, you know, above the ground. Now the reason we want to take it off the ground is it's going to do it's going to a little bit less strain on the nervous system. Now I don't want to spend too much time on that, but you know when we start taxing the nervous system, you're going to become more fatigued. Okay, and like we talked about already, you guys are already doing a ton of activities, and what we don't want to do is tax the nervous system even more by having to pull off the floor, pulling heavier weights, because we're going to be pulling you know 75 to 85 percent. All right, same thing, 10 sets of one you know, on our first workout of the week. Um, if, you, if you feel great, and maybe this is on a Saturday where you maybe got Sunday off and you're gonna start working up to some heavier singles, don't, again, don't get over 90%, all right? Because once you start getting over 90% and anything you do, form starts to break down, okay? 
Uh, most of you guys don't even know really what maxing out really is, so you'll probably never even get to 90%. But if you feel like you're in that 90% zone, you don't need to do more than three reps over 90%. You know, or something called Prelopin's chart. You guys can look that up. I mean, there's a lot of science that backs this up. So let's check out the straight bar. You've got two different types of deadlifts. All right, you've got what's called a sumo deadlift, where your feet are out wide, all right, and our hands are going to be inside our knees. Now, I, a lot of you guys will do the over-under grip. I would suggest just doing a double overhand grip. There's something called a hook grip. Don't worry about that. Just grab the bar, double overhand, all right. Now, what's going to happen if you, if you do this way, it's going to put a lot of strain on that bicep tendon. A lot of the power lifters, a lot of stronger guys, will actually end up straining their pec and their bicep tendon on the hand that's turned under. We don't want to do that. Let's just stay, we're not, we're not trying to be power lifters here. We're just trying to make ourselves as strong as possible for the baseball field, all right? So let's go double overhand. What we want to do is uh, think about, see my feet are slightly open. I got a pretty wide stance. I want to think about my knees going out when I go down, okay? Now basically, I just want to take my crotch and lower my crotch down to the bar. Okay, and try to pull, once I grab the bar, I'm going to try to pull my shoulders back and then I'm going to stand up and back. So you're going to think of this exercise almost like a seesaw. I, you know, a lot of guys will just try to, you know, try to pull it up. No, we want to try to pull it and pull it back. Okay, we're going to try to get our hips, tighten our glutes and get our hips going through the exercise. All right, like this. So here, all right, see how, see how fast I lowered that? Now, most people don't get hurt pulling the exercise up. They get hurt because they break their form and they're trying to lower the weight slow. You know, what will happen is they'll start to round their back when they lower the weight. We don't want to do that. All right, we want to keep it here. All right, that's how we want to do that exercise. Now, the conventional way, which I don't suggest you guys do, but if you're dying to do it, is your feet are shoulder width apart and your hands are on the outside of your knees. Okay, much like the trap bar, just find a spot out where you can look here. The only reason I, I don't recommend this exercise is because it's hard for you guys to maintain a straight back, okay? Or a straight lower back. It's okay if you arch maybe the upper back a little bit, but you guys are not gonna be advanced enough to, to think about that. But you wanna try to keep your back as flat as possible, okay? Line your shoelaces up with the bar. Now, and try to keep this bar as close to your legs on the sumo and the conventional as possible. Now, once the bar starts to drift, if it gets away from you, that's when you're going to break form. All right? So we're going to just drop down here, here, there. That's a straight bar. Okay, guys, here we are on the bench press. Now, I know in the program we don't have the traditional bench press uh, prescribed for the workout. All right, and I'm going to explain to you why. Now, on the traditional bench press, you guys are probably going to take a wide grip and just lower it, and that puts a lot of strain on the shoulders. That's where the, the bench press maybe gets a little bit of a bad rap, all right, because most people, athletes, are doing it a lot like bodybuilders are going to try to do it. We're not trying to get really thick pecs. Now, what that's going to do, that's going to, it's going to limit us in, in a lot of different ways. And what we want to do, you know, we want to be, be strong up here, but we don't want to be very thick, all right? And so we don't want to have a super wide grip. Now, what happens when, uh, when your elbow goes past your shoulder right there on that bench press, that's when, the, that's when the humerus and everything starts to roll forward. And there's a lot of little tendons, your rotator cuff, things like that. that those, those little tendons, they, they, get, uh, they get kind of irritated in there, all right? And you don't want to do that. What we want to do, if we're going to bench press, we want to tuck our elbows, have a little bit narrower grip, tuck our elbows here and arch up. See, my elbows really don't go, don't go past my shoulder. This is where you get in trouble, all right? So watch me. We don't, I don't want you to do the straight bench press, especially during the season, but if it's your only option, I want you guys to be able to do it correctly. So what we want to do, get your grip. I would suggest... Uh, Maybe your pointer finger on the smooth. So you've got almost a shoulder width apart grip, okay? Now, I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of technique with you, but we wanna have our shoulder blades together, okay? And put a lot of our weight on our upper back. 
So take your feet, lock them in, and push up. Almost like you're squatting. All right, so you see the tension I'm putting right here on my legs? So I'm trying to put all the weight on my upper back. Now, I'm not trying to necessarily push the weight up. I'm trying to push myself away from the weight, okay? So once the back of my shoulders are on this bench, they're not gonna move throughout the, through the rest of the exercise. I'm gonna set this as high where I can just kind of pull the weight out. The last thing I wanna do is lock myself in and then raise the weight like that. So look what happened to the back of my shoulders. They just flew right off the back of the bench. So I don't, can you see the side of my shoulders? What you don't want to happen is when we bench, we don't want to take our shoulders off the bench like this. This is not what we're trying to do. That's going to start moving all of that around in there. We want to try to lock that in. Okay? So fingers on the smooth. Back of my shoulders are on the bench. Okay? Weight some upper back. So we demonstrated the bench press and we want to try to stay away from that and we want to incorporate the floor press. Now we talked about the dangers of getting that elbow behind the shoulder. But the floor press is going to eliminate all of that. So on the floor, when we lay down on the floor, the elbow is going to stop on the floor. Okay. Now this exercise is actually harder than the straight bench press because you're going to lose your stretch reflex. Now, you know, if I take it and I, you know, I lower it and I go there, this is actually gonna stop me in the middle of the movement. So I've almost gotta be brutally strong through the middle of the movement. So you're gonna find that this exercise is actually more difficult for, from a strength standpoint than maybe say the straight bench press. You might even be able to do 10% less on the floor press than you can actually do on the regular bench because you're taking your legs out too. And I know you guys don't know much about a leg drive and a bench press, but eventually you'll get there. There's no leg drive either in a floor press, okay? All right. So notice here too, <clears throat> I have a multi-grip bar, all right? Now these handles are like this. So I'm putting my shoulder is actually gonna be in neutral. This is a much safer position for a shoulder to be in when you're in a pressing movement. To just watch here and then go like that. I mean, you can just feel that capsule close when you're doing that. And it's just, it's just, it's almost irritating to just do. But if you're here and tuck your elbows, boom. Again, this is not for bodybuilding. That's not what we're doing. We're doing this to increase our power. All right, so I'll demonstrate for you. So what I want you guys to do is, uh, is, is take this about 50 to 60% of your one rep max, okay? So this is about, that's about right for me here. Now I wanna take this and I wanna move these weights as fast as I can, but under control. Okay, now on the eccentric phase, the lowering of the phase on a floor press is going to be a little bit different than maybe say on a deadlift. All right, so I've got to still got to control the movement, but I want to try to go as fast as I can go under control. So I'll demonstrate. So I've got, me personally, I've got about a medium grip here. All right, so my shoulder blades are together. All right, I'm trying to put the, up, the weight on my upper back as much as I can. All right, I'm pulling the weight out. Here. And then rack the weight. That's the four press. Okay, guys, now we're moving on to the one arm row. All right, this is a terrific exercise uh, for the upper back. Now, you've got your accelerator muscles, which, which makes your arm go forward, but the only thing slowing it down is guess what? Your upper back. All right, you've got you've to have some muscles up here. You've got to be strong in the back to allow your arm to go quickly forward. All right, this is a great exercise to keep you guys safe, all right? And what it's gonna do too, it's gonna balance out, you know, the pushing. You wanna be, you wanna try to get a strong rowing, you know, as you do pushing, all right? So uh, what I like to do personally is I like to either uh, stand at the rack or you can get on a bench, but you wanna take the weight, all right? Embrace yourself here, all right? And lower the weight, stretch, and pull back to the hip, pull back to the hip. Not straight up, but back to the hip. Take that elbow and roll it back that way. Okay guys, um, another exercise that, that gives you another option for the, for the back, instead of doing the one arm row, 
we can use a traditional barbell, okay, and do kind of the same thing. Now, in this movement, we don't want to be, you know, at a 90, we don't want our body at a 90 degree, all right? That's going to be tough on the lower back. More like 70, around 70 degrees, something like that. It's going to give you a more, you can be able to handle more weight that way as well. Now, a lot of guys I've seen go under hand grip. Don't do that. Just stay double overhand, and I want you to try to pull this weight to your abdominals. Now, you have to keep your abs tight to protect your lower back. All right, now I would suggest you guys can start to kind of vary your grips a little bit. The wider you go, the tougher it's going to be. Any kind of back exercise you do, when you, the wider you go, the tougher it's going to be because you're going to take the biceps more out of play. But what I would do, I would suggest somewhere in the medium grip, and you guys can start to mess around with your grips wider or closer, things like that. All right, so we're going to bend down about, about shoulder width apart here. Okay, here. That's the uh, bend of a row. All right. Okay, guys, now we're moving on to the ab wheel. Now, you can get pretty fancy with a wheel like this. This is a little, uh, maybe it's a little fancier than, you know, you could probably just go to whatever, Dick's Sporting Goods and buy one for five bucks. That's a little bit smaller. Um, I just got this one for demonstration purposes. So, again, this is an abdominal movement, but we're not going to be doing a lot of twisting with it. Now, you can, I'll demonstrate going out to the sides. But this is a great core exercise. Make sure your uh, your abs are tight when you're doing this. And it's gonna take a little bit of upper back strength as well. So we can go out forward with it. And if you wanna to go to the sides, you can. That's the ab wheel. All right, guys, so for the forearms, I would highly encourage you guys to invest in, uh, in one of these and we'll actually link it in the description for you guys if you guys want to get it on Amazon that's great um, you can just uh, you've got this exercise just rolling it up and rolling it down back and forth I would try to load that up where two sets up and down is, uh, is pretty taxing on you and then I would just put it down but that, this is a great exercise for you all right guys so right now we're gonna demonstrate two different tricep exercises this one's gonna be the tricep roll up all right, uh, we're gonna do about two sets, eight to 12 reps. So maybe pick a, pick a weight you could probably do 15 with, you know, and try to do eight to 12. Um, you can use a flat bench or you can use a decline bench. It really doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna demonstrate on the decline. You can make this decline as steep as you want. It really doesn't matter to me. So um, start with the weights here, drop it back. All right, see how my, my arms, everything's locked. I'm in line with my shoulders. I'm just gonna break my elbow down and drop the weight on my shoulder here. Then I'm gonna roll back and then I'm gonna roll up. So weight, so the weight really doesn't come off the shoulder until you roll up. Now what you don't wanna do is this. Roll back, roll up and then push. This is not a press, this is an extension. So roll up there. So I'm trying to keep my elbows high like that. Okay guys, what we're gonna do, we're gonna perform right now is what's called the JM press. Now, you can do this press with a straight bar. Again, if you've got some sort of multi-grip bar that, that, that puts your grip at a little bit different angle, you're gonna find it's gonna be, be a little bit easier for you than having a straight bar, but it really doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate here. Now, it's basically, we're gonna take the weight, almost like an extension, we're gonna break our elbows down to our face and press up, okay? almost like a skull crusher. Maybe some of your parents have probably seen those old school movements where they drop their, the weight back and they go over their head like a skull crusher. We're not, we, don't, we don't put as much strain as our shoulder here. So we're gonna take it here, break our elbows down, boom. And that's gonna, that's gonna help build up around the elbow. And that's what we're trying to do to really you know, get some, some good extension. All right. So make sure on this movement that your head is in front of the whole bar, okay? Because if not, you're gonna hit the bar on these J-cups, and that's not what you wanna do. So, take the weight out, and drop it down to your face here, press it up, press it up. Same thing, two sets, eight to 12 reps. Okay, last exercise we're gonna demonstrate um, for the upper body is gonna be the hammer curl. All right, what I'd long, I don't want you guys turning the elbows out. Again, that's gonna put more pressure on the bicep tendon. Keep that hand neutral here, 
that's going to really activate the forearms as well. All right, so you can do it one arm at a time here, or you can just do two hands at a time, like that. Right? Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do, again, to try to avoid as much rotation, you know, trying to work our abs. I know we did the uh, ab wheel, and now for our lower abdominals as well, we're going to do um, almost like a, uh, a knee up, okay, a leg lift on the sitting on a bench. Now you notice I've got a medicine ball uh, underneath me. Um, I would suggest you guys use, you know, eight to 10 pound medicine ball if you can. This is only a two. It's all I can find for demonstration purposes, but hopefully you guys have got about an eight to 10 pound medicine ball. Now just squeeze the ball together, okay? Grab a hold of the bench, tighten your abs. Okay guys, for the grip, I know we did the wrist rolls. We'll also kind of do just a plate hold right now. So you're gonna need bumper plates. It's gonna be hard to use a standard plate that's got kind of the, the edge on it like this. You don't, you're not gonna be able to use these and just hold it like that. It's really gonna defeat the purpose. So you're gonna need some sort of bumper plate that's a little smooth on each side. Now I would recommend using some chalk if you want. Um, I would recommend you guys, you know, start with 25 pounds plates and just hold for time, hold for a max time. Get whoever, your buddy, your mom, your dad, look at the stopwatch, whatever, and try to beat your time, you know, each time during the week. All right, so you can just hold these and just kind of work yourself up from there. Start with the 25s and then work yourself up to the 45 pound plates.